hazard trees down. I'd like to get moving on that. But that's about it. Thank you. And Councilor Pay, you know? I'm good. I'm You're good. Councilor Smith? I'm, not, I'm looking around. Is uh, Councilor Testio or Councilor? There you go. Hello, everybody. I'm one of the new counselors. Um, I'm the tourism commissioner, and there's a lot going on with tourism, so much that I don't think the town can handle it. A lot of people contacting me. Travel Salem has been awesome, and uh, we want to get some things started, so we just have to go at the rate that the uh, stakeholders uh, allow us to because we don't have all the amenities. One of the things I'm hoping to do is get some signage so uh, people aren't asking Elaine over there where the restrooms are and uh, letting their dogs go to the bathroom at her place because they can't find the park. Um, also, Travel Salem gave me a call yesterday and had a good long conversation with the CEO and she, uh, she they are there for us. So I can't wait to, to join in with that. And uh, it could be a full-time job, but we also got some bicyclists that want to ride around in, you know, our forest and uh, feel like they don't need as many amenities. They don't need to stay the night so we could get them to join in and um, bring a whole new crowd of people here that uh, seem really cool. And I got millennials, so that's who's probably going to be hopping over. And that'll be bring a college town feel to the, to the town and um, really excited about all that. So... That's all I got to say, and um, thanks. Oh, I do agree with the uh, uh, ship with the water situation. It'd be great to have, you know, some more supply and more storage, and also the the uh, local help. All the talent we've got in Detroit is amazing. The builders, the the diggers, the earth pushers, um, you know, water specialists. I just cannot believe what we got going on here. It's a real safe haven, and I hope we make it that way. That uh, Wherever we live, we can come here for, for uh, you know, get away from the line of tension um, that is there in the valley. And I think that's why we're all coming back. So, um, anyways, I hope to meet all you guys and I uh, hope you enjoy our Zoom meetings. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, um, I'll hand it back to the mayor. Thanks. And, Councilor Luke, I saw you. Where are you? Well, good morning. How's everybody? I didn't sleep much last night because I was too excited about today. So many of you haven't seen for a long time. So many of you have never seen. So um, my lot is right to the right of that awesome new build of Casey Michelle Searles. And right in between the awesome new build of Jim and Karen Hobbs. So it's just dirt, but uh, I got some holes going on and I'm gonna be putting poo pipe in today and all that good stuff. And we're getting ready to break ground. Um, I guess we did break ground, didn't we? We got holes all over, but um, we've got water and um, not a lot of it. So be really sparing with it, please. Please don't wash your boats. I hate to say it, go to the, when you pull it out, Wash it up there real good. Don't wash your cars. Don't don't water your lawns. <laughs> but um, thanks for everybody for being patient through all this stuff. Uh, I want to thank just everybody that's been a part of this um, whole thing. You know the county has been phenomenal. Kevin and and Danielle and Bethel and and all those guys from the county working together and um, just uh, all the counselors and. You know, we've had hard times and good times and so forth. And Chris Epley, um, you know, I'm going to miss a lot of people, of course. But the, the bottom line is, you know, Chris Epley and I have talked a lot. None of us have ever been through this. Um, it's a learning experience. Um, I've made a lot of mistakes. I'll continue to make a lot of mistakes. Uh, but my heart's in the right place. And hopefully I get my head on straight, too, most of the time. But um, if yeah, anybody needs anything of, of me, uh, feel free to contact me. Um, and, uh, you know, I just really look forward to continuing to build, to build us back up. Uh, I come up and, and it is tough to see the brown and it's tough to see the burn. But I just keep looking for that silver lining. Uh, I have to. I think everybody does. Um, 
there's a lot of trauma. Um, don't be afraid to feel it, process it, talk to people about it. Um, and then look for that silver lining to, uh, to uplift your spirit and uplift the town and your neighbors and help wherever you can. You know, it's a small community um, and there's a lot of people that have been here for a, a long, long time. Lauren and Phyllis, uh, particularly, I know so well. Um, I mean, they're like, they're like grandparents to me. Uh, do anything for them and got to remember that those people, this is their, their entire life here. Um, and people like me that's an implant transplant, I did grow up in an extremely small town, so I do understand it. Um, and, and my heart's here. Uh, my family's going to be here for a long, long time. And um, I'm just excited. You know, I'm excited about moving forward and, uh, and healing and building and growing and, and all that. So that's all I have to say. Thank you for everything. Thanks for your support. Thanks, Tim. Okay, um, one other group we need to thank, and I'm, I'm going to call on them here in just a second, is, is the Council of Government. The Mid-Valley uh, COG has stepped up, and uh, one of the things we were running into very quickly was uh, the time it was taking going to take to process building permit applications. And uh, our two staff, Kelly and, and Michelle, in the office were being overwhelmed. That's the good news. We've, we've actually had more... Uh, permit applications, building permit applications in the last month than we had in the previous two years. Um, probably know why. Um, but uh, Mc Cog, Mc Mc uh, excuse me, McCray Carmichael, uh, who does help us with our planning uh, to kind of take that on and take the load off our city staff, which in the week or two that that's been going on has allowed the staff to breathe. They're going, God, we can actually get some other stuff done. So Renata Wakely is here from Cog and McCray couldn't be here today, so we're just going to let her have a few minutes. Thanks, Mayor. Hi, uh, Renata Wakely, Mid Willamette Valley Council of Governments. Um, we are owned by our member governments, so the City of Detroit, City of Gates, and Marion County are members, and they direct us in what our staff should do. So one of um, the services that we provide to our cities is land use planning. Um, we, the cities contract with Marion County for septic inspections, building officials, those are the experts. But first we do local reviews. So the city has an opportunity to review a structural permit, um, a use for your zoning, whether it's commercial or residential land. Um, so I encourage you to reach out to the city first. Although we are working very closely with Marion County and their support, we consider ourselves an extension of the city staff. Um, McRae could not be here today, but I brought a lot of her business cards. I think uh, many of you have probably already engaged with her if you've gotten your building permit review or have started that process. So I'll be here to um, make sure you get her, her cards. We, again, are just an extension of the city to try and help with the, the um, questions and expedite that service. Um, at COG, we also have one other program, and I have brochures for that. It's for income qualifying people who uh, can get low interest loans. So we have approximately 150,000 available to do in loans if you income qualify. So I can speak with you about that program. Um, we've assisted three people so far. And if the demand is such, we have more qualifying people, um, I'm sure that we can get more funding to help. It's a low interest loan program. It's not for everyone. Again, you have to income qualify, but we can help with uh, utility repairs on your site, your septic repair, and some of your structural work. It's normally a program that helps with weatherization if you already have your structure, but in this case, obviously, we want to help people with rebuilding. Um, so I'll be around here if you have questions. Thanks, Mayor. Thanks, Renata. Um, right now, we'd like to uh, uh, talk have uh, Detroit Lake Foundation and Rich Duncan Construction come up to talk about the great project that we're doing in terms of the community center and uh, give us an update on what's going on there. I don't know if I need this thing or not. Can anybody hear me? Nope. 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 I don't do well with microphones. I was hoping I had my big boy voice going. Um, I'm Davis Evenson, the president of Detroit Lake Foundation. Um, Again, I was the rock, paper, scissor, became president of this great association. But who is DLF? Um, we're kind of all scattered around. Could you all raise your hands if you're part of DLF? As you can see, there's quite a few of us amongst the group. 
and that's who we are, Detroit Lake Foundation. Uh, Detroit Lake Foundation was established many, many, many years ago by a great, you know, a great uh, local residents here in this great community. Uh, one name comes to mind is Dean O'Donnell. Dean, if you'd raise your hand. Everybody loves Dean, right? Yeah. Dean's a great guy. He's st helped establish this program or this association. Um, and again, what year did it start out? What, 20 years ago? 25 years ago? At least 15, so a long time ago. Um, over the years, it kind of lost some traction. And shortly after the fires, uh, Dean took it upon himself to reach out to 20, 30 individuals on a Saturday morning, October 10th and DLF was reborn um, with a lot of energy. As you can see, there's a lot of us here. We're all walks of life. We're part-time residents, we're full-time residents. We're just visitors of this great community. And a lot of us, you know, some just, just travelers coming in and out of, of Detroit. Um, I think a lot of us here in this, in, in this area here can, can admit that Detroit, you know, I come, I come and go, but there's a lot of people in this state of Oregon that know where Detroit's at and have some kind of maybe a childhood memory being up there going up the summers and it's just a great place um, on that day on Saturday we didn't know what we we're getting ourselves into we just know that uh, we knew right there and then that we needed to step up and uh, what was our purpose what was our agenda it was pretty simple it was to rebuild Detroit uh, what that looked like we did not know but we wanted to do whatever we could do and local support um, just get in there and get after it and see what we could do just to rebuild Detroit there was no hidden agenda uh, Again, Detroit Lake Foundation is a nonprofit organization, and that's our agenda. We're going to rebuild Detroit. As things went along, we had a lot of work to do. I's and T's putting things together. It's a new board, and you know a lot of ideas, energy, hopes and dreams, all those things. And then we caught wind of what Mr. Rich Duncan was doing. And you want to talk about hopes and dreams? He put together this idea of building the community center for Detroit. Uh, put it, put together a meeting. Uh, it was at. Uh, I can't remember exactly where it was at at this point, but he put together and all these contractors came together, said they're gonna donate their time, resources, whatever they could to put this thing together. And I think a lot of us here can admit community center, community center has definitely been on the horizon of, of a project to be done here and, and it's needed. It's been it's been on, it's been off, it's where are we gonna put it, what can we do? You got the gym over there. Uh, Duncan took that, took the bull by the horns and, and here we are. DLF saw that loved the you know the energy of it and said guess what I think we can be part of that so we started working with Rich and here we are that's our first project uh, we're helping build that community center and what's that community center look like and hopes and dreams will it be the new city hall it could be we're, the city knows about it we're we'll talking about it architects engineers everybody putting a design together maybe house uh, uh, the fire engines ambulances you name it Anything's, you know, anything's still open. We're still negotiating, trying to discuss things, and it could be a reality as we keep working forward. Uh, again, DLF is here to rebuild Detroit. What, can, what, what else projects we're looking at? We have a committee put together for the lake level. That's a big one. That's uh, hopes and dreams again, and we'll see what we can do about maybe trying to maintain and stabilize those lake levels so they're not so up and down every year. That's kind of a dream. That's a dream of ours, but we'll see what happens. Uh, there's other ones, uh, affordable housing. It's another one we may tackle here pretty soon. We're already looking into it. And again, it's just gonna keep going on from there. This isn't gonna be just a one and done project for Detroit Lake Foundation. Guys like Dean put this thing together years ago and it's reborn. Here we are. We got a lot of energy to put, put forth in it. Uh, try to rebuild this city that we all love and we all miss. So with that, I'm gonna hand this on over to Mr. Rich Duncan. He's gonna kind of give us an update on the community center. He knows all the I's and T's of what's going on over there. Mr. Bill McCall himself over here with Mr. Duncan, uh, Duncan Construction. He's the uh, superintendent on the job, and he kind of fill you on where we're at. I just know right now that they're going to pour footings next week, and then I need to go to work and start laying block walls. So here's Mr. Rich Duncan. Davis, hurry up, would you? <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk. Uh, it, you know, we, we had seven guys, actually. We had coffee. Um, at the Covered Bridge Cafe in Staten and talked about what could we do? Should we build, rebuild the community church? Should we, what, what, should, what should we do, get a building together? What should we do? And, and we didn't really have an idea, but then like a week later, was up here with a group of people and we were taking our thing, I, you know, we're caravanning up here to get our stuff out and we were over there on Cluster and uh, they talk about having the, 
gym be a community center came up and then it was 20 years ago that was an idea and there was a guy that was willing to donate that back then and so I just made the call to find out if that was still possible and uh, he said sure it is not believing that we would do anything but um, we were able to get that donated and uh, now there's um, contractors I would say about 70 different companies have leaned in um, we've got about just under two million dollars in value uh, donation uh, like kind uh, in kind work being done on the on the project um, so we had a quick meeting um, kind of came up with a, a plan and and our, our hopes are to have the community uh, the gymnasium uh, right now is summit cleanings over there we got a bunch of volunteers um, we're going to restore that to its um, glory days so the community can walk in there and shoot some hoops or you know can have a old church or um, have a gathering and a potluck so hopefully by Labor Day Bill <laughs> on you there buddy uh, we'll have that part of it open I don't know if we'll have the whole project done but we're we're shooting for it so um, I just got to thank everybody that's leaning in because I'm telling you everybody want to do something good and uh, it's just turning out a really great thing so um, there isn't anything we can't do so appreciate it Okay, so now we're going to, um, Commissioner Cameron is going to kind of talk about the county stuff and have some of his folks.